Thank you for being here this um, morning, afternoon, evening, whatever you are in the world. I am really excited to be here and very grateful um, to get to share a little bit of our practices. Um, my name is Wendy Mata. I am the founder of Bruja Power Botanica. I am a Bruja Curandera by Lineage and Initiated Shaman. Uh, this basically translates to, uh, to the, to the uh, that I translates to uh, coming from a lineage of uh, witches and healers from Mexico. Um, today, I'm going to talk to you about one of the many tools that we can use when we when it comes to Mexican folk magic. Uh, when I had the honor to be invited to this presentation, I had a really hard time to cho choosing what to talk about today because her practices are so rich and are so complex and so diverse. Um, and I created a presentation um, that it was already complete and finished. And then today, this morning at 6.30 a.m. in the morning, I was awakened by my ancestors. That's how we are Mexicans. We hear our grandfathers and our great grandfathers and our great grandmothers. I was awakened by, uh, uh, by my abuela actually uh, telling me that I had to change the topic. So I did, um, and I'm gonna bring it into the screen. And basically what I'm gonna do for the next 30 minutes is that I'm going to walk you through the process of limpias. Limpias are one of our main practices in full magic and curanderismo, uh, which is basically having the ability to reset your energy. And I'm going to tell you how. And I'm also going to give you access to uh, the six hours workshop that uh, actually comes with this class because it's impossible to teach how to do Olympia in just 30 minutes. Uh, but what I did is that I created a direct, direct access for you. So if this is something that you are interested in learning, uh, you're going to go to the website, enter your email so my system can give you access to the workshop. Okay, so let's do it. I see those people from all over uh, sharing and that is amazing. Hello from the UK. Hi, Mel. I was just over there last month. Hi, Texas. Hi, Minnesota. And Ola from Mexico. I'm actually in Mexico right now. I live in Virginia in the US, but I'm from Mexico. I came to visit family um, and I'll be here for uh, the rest of the week. Okay, so you should be um, seeing in my screen now and in my screen uh, you should be you should be able to see what I'm about to share uh, so drop in the chat if you cannot hear me for whatever reason because I am in a very small town uh, called Telchak which is two hours from Merida Yucatan and our internet is actually quite spotty over here so I'm asking to all the guides all my ancestors to help me make it work because <laughs> uh, we need to make it work right so um, what we're going to talk about today is what is Olympia, uh, the principle of transference, the steps to create Olympia, and actually a little bit about interpretations. So, um, as I mentioned before, uh, this is a tiny little snippet, snippet of a six hours workshop, or maybe four, I don't remember how many hours it is. But if you actually want to learn all the steps and all the processes on how to do Olympia, please go here, bruja.us slash Olympias, or scan this QR code and um, download the information. So it's a portal, you enter your, your information and it's gonna send you access to the class. There is also there a workbook on how to do interpretations for egg clearings. There is also a workbook on how to create your own spiritual baths because when you are doing cleansings, you also wanna protect your, your auric field and your body, right? And then there is also a few recipes on how to create your own cleansing spray all this based on what my family has passed to me about uh, curanderismo. And then there is also um, additional information on how to use elemental forces uh, for your energetic cleansings or your limpia. So lots of information there. Um, so if this is a topic that you like, please um, take the time to scan this or grab the website. And if somebody please out there on the back uh, can copy this, this um, website and um, paste it in the chat so that people can go there please someone love for me because i can't look where i am here <laughs> okay let's do this so um let's talk first about what is olympia and again we're going to cover all this in just 30 minutes right but um olympia 
in okay important note first before we go deeper into this something that is really important to mention is that what i am sharing it's my own method of limpias what my family passed to me and my teachers if you go somewhere else in mexico or in latin america in general you are going to see different systems different processes applied to the process of limpia because everybody is different we all have different ways of doing things and there is no right or wrong so if you're interested in learning about our practices, I invite you to have an open mind and perhaps listen to different teachers just to see which ones of the ways makes more sense to you. The way that I teach is non-dogmatic, so I am not Catholic. Um, so I don't really teach a lot of sayings and things like that. That is not my thing. I know that a lot of people does. Um, and also, it's not based on superstition. It's not based on dogma. It's more based on processes and systems. My background is in industrial mechanical engineering. So I like protocols for everything. Um, so you're going to notice that. It's a very important note to do. And a second note to cover is that brujería, curanderismo are not a closed practice. Uh, perhaps some people believe that it's a closed practice, but I do not believe that it's a closed practice because we are mestizos. We are a blend of everything. Although my grandmother uh, can can trace her uh, Toltec uh, blood up to many generations, and from my dad's side, we can trace some of the Apache blood. Um, I'm also a blend of other things and pretty much every Mexican and every Latin American because of colonization, we became blended, we became mestizos. So I don't think that we have the right to close a practice to something that comes from different places. So just to know there, um, digest it and feel, uh, feel how you feel about it. Okay, so Olympia, it's basically bringing harmony back into your body. We humans, or if you're not a human, welcome to the world, <laughs> welcome to the planet. Uh, but we humans, what we do is that we are like little sp sponges, right? Like we absorb energy from everything. After a long day of work, after being around toxic people, we visited haunted houses. I mean, we, we just love haunted places. But what happens when we're going to all these places is that we're absorbing all this energy, right? And we are also absorbing the thoughts and emotions and feelings from the people around us sometimes consciously sometimes unconsciously but especially if we are um if we are um empaths right like we are like this disabsorption system that is just getting energy from everywhere so what olympia does is that it releases all that funk that gets attached to you and many different traditions have many different ways of limpias. And then within Mexico, of course, there are several different ways of limpias, because as I say, we are a blend of everything. But uh, what I like to teach when it comes to limpias is why it actually works, so that you understand uh, that you can do a limpia on the spot. So this is a tool that in these 30 minutes, you're going to learn how to use it in your life. So if you're having a bad day, you can do this right away. But also you can go into that website or into that QR code and you can download the whole thing and actually learn how to do it pretty well. So, hold on, a sip of water. The principle of transference is the foundation of shamanism and curanderismo. Or for a curanderismo, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that hat today which basically says that we can transfer energy, we can manipulate energy from one thing to the other. We can move from here to here, from here to here. So if our body is filled with all that funk that we were talking about, the toxic people, negative places, even our own thoughts, right? We want to use the principle of transference to take out the energy that is no longer serving us. When we use the principle of transference, we also use extractions, which is basically taking stuff out. So transference, we transfer energy from one place to another, and then we extract that energy. In the Mexican community, and in a lot of places, not just Mexico, we use different tools. Like, for example, for us, one of the most typical ones is using eggs for limpia. So we use an egg to transfer energy from our body to the egg. We can also use Agua Florida. We swear for by Agua Florida. For us, Agua Florida solves everything. <laughs> so if we have any Latinos there in the chat, you know that we use it for everything. 
Uh, we also use crystals, we use feathers, we use drums, we use fire with smoke, you know, smoke. We use a lot of tools that allow us to transfer energy from this, what we are, into something else. Obviously, because we are transferring energy from one thing to another, uh, we don't want to consume that thing. So if you're using an egg for lymph, for cleansing your body, please do not eat it. If you're using limes to cleanse your body, please don't eat it. If you're using water, because that's what you have to cleanse your body, please don't drink it, because then it defeats the purpose. You're moving stuff from one place to another. <laughs> So let's talk a little bit more about traditional egg limpias in curanderismo. So eggs are one of the most traditional extraction tools in Mexico and in Latin America. And I think that a lot of countries use them. Uh, sometimes I see these very interesting uh, conversations in TikTok about who owns this and that and the other. And honestly, I don't think anybody owns anything. And also we don't have the right to decide who owns what. Uh, so please take permission to use these tools because if there is something that is gonna make you feel amazing, why would you not use it? Of course be respectful, but why would you not use it? It makes no sense. Uh, besides removing contamination, X also function as a scrying tool. Uh, when you are doing Olympia with X, you also have the ability to determine a lot of information from an egg, like a lot. You can actually see if the energetic contamination that you're carrying is coming from a, fem from a female, from a male, from your own thoughts, from somebody else. You can see if somebody's throwing some like bad juju at you, magia negra, whatever you want to call it. You can see if what you are feeling, it's all from your mind or your mental stuff. We know that about 85% of all ailments are kind of like self-created magical ailment ailments. So at egg, it's a really cool tool to see stuff. At the same time, a word of caution, we don't necessarily need to know all the time, right? Like we don't necessarily need to know where the funk is coming from because we may get into the loop of, oh, this person sent this bad you to me, so I'm gonna send it back. Oh, but that person sent it to me again. Oh, but I'm sending, I'm gonna send it back. And we go in this back and forth that is honestly unnecessary. I don't know you guys, but I have a beautiful life and I have a lot of things to do, places to visit, uh, experiences to have. So the last thing I have time for is to go back and forth with someone. So I always recommend that if you're feeling the funk in your auric field that, yeah, if you wanna be curious about where it's coming from, it's okay. But also just be very mindful and strategic about how you're using your energy and your uh, your time. If you are egg allergic, this is an important one. I actually have an allergy. <laughs> and sometimes when I'm doing it because I have these globes, which is kind of funny. But uh, if you have an egg allergy, you can substitute eggs with limes, with onions, with oranges, with lemons, with garlic, or with basil. And you basically can't substitute it for anything. You can use water, you can use the rock, you can use anything. Uh, but it is important, whatever it is that you're using, to transfer en energy from one place to another, that you ask permission, that you ask this object permission uh, to work with it and for it to allow you to send whatever it is that you're carrying into the object because you know we want to be we want to be respectful and in Mexico we're very um, I actually never heard the word of animism until last year that I was teaching a class in uh, Mystic South in Atlanta but I it made a lot of sense to me like oh you're saying everything is alive and everything has a life oh yeah yeah that makes sense that's how we are so animism. Um, when you are going to use Olympia, hold on, I'm going to take a second. I'm going to call in the comments just to see if there's any like urgent questions. Um, I see a bunch of questions, but I don't know, like if there's like a super mega important question, just like keep bringing it so that I can watch it into, um, to the end. Okay. And again, I'll, if anybody can uh, please post the website that I was sharing earlier so that you guys can all have the benefit of the presentation plus all the additional resources, that'll be great. Okay, so the first thing that we do and we're gonna do Olympia is that we have to select 
and prepare the egg. We have to select and prepare this tool that is going to be absorbing, right? The energy of, or uh, like that funk that we carry. Traditionally, traditionally, you will want to use a fresh egg from a farm or some uh, traditions within Mexico use eggs only from black hens or dark hens or red hens, depending on who they are. But honestly, you know, sometimes we got to use what we got to use. Sometimes you have a farm and a fresh egg and that is wonderful. But sometimes all you have grocery store in the kitchen and maybe it's a 7-eleven and that's the only place where you can find eggs at 11 p.m at night because you really need to do a link peel. and i always say that um that magic that curanderismo that cleansings need to be practical so be practical um i think that there's a lot of importance on on dogmas and steps and, and the ways that we do things but also at the end of the days we're humans living a human experience that need to make things applicable by whatever you are right like right now i'm here in mexico because i'm visiting family um i don't have a farm with fresh eggs if i needed olympia i will just drive to whatever store nearby and i'm gonna use that so uh first thing is you prepare and select the eggs if you're lucky enough to live in a farm and have fresh eggs that's awesome but it's not usually you we have um, we usually cleanse the eggs. And there's many ways of doing this. You can use salt water. You can smudge the uh, egg. You can uh, use holy water if you believe in that sort of thing. Um, you can um, bless your own water and use that. You can use a feather. Um, you can also, honestly, when in, when in a hurry and having to use this tool on the wall, have an egg, blow to it, and just specify with your intention, with your heart, with your, with your own self. I'm releasing whatever this egg is carrying so that I can use it. And then you connect to the egg uh, and have the intention, setting the intention of using it to cleanse your field and uh, to support you. You can also, of course, if you work with your ancestors, you can call upon your ancestors. You can call upon your guides. Um, you can call upon angels if you are with angels or any higher power that you believe in to assist you. When we are doing the transference of energy, it's always good to have your, your spiritual world directors, your committee of people around helping you uh, in case the, the releases are a little bit strong. And if you are tired or depleted, you want to have that support system. So it's always important to invite them. You can also, if there's nobody that you can think of at the moment to come and help you with Olympia, you can also, uh, what you can do is that you can just ask the land anywhere you are, there's soil, right? So ask the land if it will help you, ask the spirit of a tree if it will help you, ask the spirit of an ocean if it will help you, so that it can facilitate your process of cleansing. Hold on. I think I actually figured that. Maybe I did. Let's see. Yeah, I did figure it out. That should be on the link, right? The, the website. Okay. So what are the steps of Olympia? So this is only one step. There's actually several, but if you go into that website that I just posted on the chat uh, and enter your information and get access to my portal, you are going to get uh, the whole protocol together. But if you don't do that and you're just here because you're curious and you are uh, trying to figure it out, you learned something today, uh, at least do this one, which is doing Olympia on zigzag. Uh, you can do Olympia for yourself easily, or you can do Olympia for someone else. If you're going to be doing it for someone else, just be sure that you're asking for permission, please, because we don't want to go and manipulate anybody's energy without their permission. That's not cool. Uh, so if you're going to do Olympia for yourself, what you're going to do is that you're going to do a zigzag motion. This is like the quick and dirty. You grab the egg. I wish I had an egg here, but I don't. You grab the egg and you do a zigzag from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. So you can do that being standing up or you can do that doing um, sitting. And depending on your practices, depending on your belief system, you will pray. So it was passed to me by my tia, my, my aunt, who actually was a curandera. One of my most beautiful members in my life is seeing her uh, doing limpias for people. And there was a long line outside of her house of people going for Olympia because this is such an important tool for us, right? Uh, so uh, she will do a prayer. She actually teach me the prayer, but I am not Catholic. 
So I don't necessarily use prayers like that, but I do use the power of the universe because I am not Christian. So what I do is that I just ask my ancestors and the universe and even nature to help me release. But if you are Catholic or you practice any kind of Christianity, you can pray, you can say a Padre Nuestro, you can say an Ave Maria or whatever it is that feels right for you, just so that you are doing this movement of um, extracting the energy. As you're moving the egg, visualize that it's absorbing all negative energy, diseases, and emotional distress. Pay extra attention to the chakras if you believe in that thing, you know, the centers of energy. Um, I think uh, all the chakras are not a Mexican thing. I like using the word just because most people know what they are. Uh, but you want to also focus on the centers of energy on your body. To your main meridian, to your auric field, or that cocoon of energy that's around you, you also want to be sure that you're cleansing those spaces. You know, the thinking system, the seeing system, the communication system, the heart, the emotional system, the sexual system, the root system, your legs, and so on. You want to be um, ensuring that you're passing this egg through all these places, uh, so that you are absorbing energy. And what do we do with the egg? <laughs> Again, if you want to do a whole full Olympia and even want to go learn how to do this for other people, go into the website and uh, the full instructions are there. There's an entire protocol that I did for this class that I uh, was teaching in 2022. So uh, what do we do with the egg? So as I said earlier, you don't want to eat it. Don't make some scramble eggs with that. Don't make an omelet with all your funk, please. Just imagine you eating all the bad juju, right? You don't want to do that. So what you want to do is that you want to dispose it. Traditionally, the, dis the disposal of the egg will be on the earth. You will dig a hole. You will put it on the... On the um, on the earth or you will throw them into the river with the permission of the river but again becoming practical if you're in a place where you cannot go dig a hole outside just you know throw it on the throw it on the toilet i think that that will be a way of uh doing it um and then um after i haven't talked about divination i'm going to talk about divination in a minute but i want to i want to cover the steps of disposal uh, if you are done with the egg and you're not going to do divination, if you are like, I don't really care who sent me what, I just want the funk out, uh, you can just dispose right away. But if you are curious about what the hell is happening, uh, what you're going to do is that you're going to have a glass with water. I think I have a picture here somewhere. Do I? Yes. You're going to have a glass with water and you're going to throw the egg on the top. One of the things that I've heard from people saying is that if you put the egg there, you cannot look through it on the top because the energy is going to come back at you, blah, blah, blah. I personally don't believe in that. I believe in the power of transference. And I believe that we are transferring the, the energy into the egg. And if you are doing things in a protocol, check the protocol in that side that I said, uh, if you're doing things in a protocol, things don't are not supposed to come back to you because the egg is already transferring and it's absorbing. But if you believe this, I invite you to question it. I actually invite you to question everything. <laughs> if you've been in my world for a while, you've heard me saying that you have to question everything. You have to question, oops, my computer. You have to question me. You have to question everybody that you work with. You have to question your ancestors. You have to question anything because some of it may be real. It may be coming from a place of truth, but some of it may be from a belief system that doesn't necessarily serve you anymore. And you have the ability to shift the fuck out of, oh, sorry, can I curse? I'm sorry. <laughs> shift, out, shift the fuck out, because that's what it is. Out of any belief systems, out of any traditions, out of any experiences that no longer serve you. So ask everything. Ask for everything. Question everything. Question, question, question. Anyways, going back to this. If you, uh, if you believe that you looking through the egg in the top is going to send the bad juju back, then just cover it with a, with a towel, with, with a um, napkin. But I don't think it's necessary, but that's just me. If you're going to be doing divination with an egg, when you're doing this, you're going to wait 10 minutes or a minimum of 10 minutes. Some people wait longer, but 
I have a lot of things to do in life, so 10 minutes is enough for me. <laughs> um, I throw it on the water. I keep it sitting there just to let the egg kind of like sit in the water and give the message, right? And when you're doing this, I usually do it with the intention of asking the egg very specific questions. Like, I want to know if this is coming from a male or a female. I want to know if this is funk that I created for myself or if it's coming from somewhere else. I want to know if I have to do another Olympia because maybe one is not enough. I want to know if my thinking process is filled with paradigms and ideas that I need to release. Like, I ask very specific questions. Yes, go to that website that I share and get the whole thing. Uh, but some of the typical ones that you're going to see in an egg cleansing, it's blood or black dots, which usually represents energetic contamination, like really, really heavy energetic contamination. We're talking about uh, brujeria, like negative brujeria, like, uh, like black magic. We're talking about evil eye. We're talking about the funk from a negative environment. We're talking about um, really extra heavy stuff that you may want to have help from a professional or maybe you are one uh, to do additional extractions. Or if you don't have the ability to go to someone, just keep cleansing yourself with eggs or with limes or with garlics or with onions or whatever you have until you can take all that stuff out. If you see white dots on the egg, this usually represents ojo, evil eye. But I think that this is my own belief, okay? And again, this is my method of cleansing with eggs, which is very protocol based and practical. Not all ojo comes from someone else. I, I don't really do a lot of shamani healing anymore because I'm running an online school now for teaching different things. But when I had my healing center, people came thinking that a lot of the phone came from somebody else. And one of the things that I was seeing was, no, it, actually, no, uh, it comes from you. It comes from your thoughts. It comes from your fears. It comes from your own programmings. It comes from not questioning realities. It comes from being in dogma. It comes from being manipulated. So you have to do a very thorough investigation, to name it away, to determine where the energy is coming from. And a lot of it may come from ourselves. Of course, the more you are in the spiritual path, the more uh, discipline you have about your thoughts, about your ideas, about your behaviors, about what you allow into your field. So it could be that it's not yours, but I think it happens to everybody most of the time. Honestly, it comes from us. Uh, maybe like 85% at least. If you see um, like membrane lines and like little lines in the white dog, in the white thingy, is that called a joke? I don't know. In the white thingy. <laughs> uh, these represent the situations uh, that are creating the negative energy. It will show you if it's one person, two people, three people, four people, five people. If the lines are coming to the right side, that represents females. If the lines are coming to the left side, that represents males. So you throw the egg, right? And you leave it sitting and then you grab it to read it. And this is gonna be the right one. This is gonna be the left one. Although I don't know if the camera is, you know, turning things right now, but I see this as my right and this is in my, as my left. So we can also see if it's right or left. The good thing about this is like if we see a line coming in the center, we also know that that represents the self. Or perhaps it could also be somebody with a fluid uh, gender. That could be too. But it's like uh, usually male, female, maybe fluid or, or self. So if we see the line, we're going to know. We're not going to know if it's our own behaviors and our own ways, the ones that are giving Funk. That's just what it is. I have how many minutes? One minute, one minute, one minute. <laughs> okay. If you have a broken jolt, this represents extremely heavy energy. Really heavy. Like heavy, heavy. Um, if there's no physical causes appeared, right? Like if your ex fell down before you did the limpia it may be that the egg fall down and that's what causes the situation right but if it's not like that if you see like yolk that is broken like stuff that is broken inside or like gilk inside 
this represents also a really heavy energy or sickness. So if this is the case, I will definitely advise that you do more thorough divination, that you uh, do a medical checkup, that you go to a healer or a witch or a therapist, whatever it is that you need, right? A lawyer, who knows? Whatever it is that you need uh, to dig deeper. Like if this is what the egg is telling you. What you could also do is that you can, you see one and you may be like, mm, is this is this that bad or it just happens to be that the egg is all fucked up. And you can take a pendulum, right? And ask with the pendulum or you can take the tarot, whatever it is that you use. And if you see a yes, then just dig deeper. And then lastly, bubbles. If uh, bubbles usually represents mental programmings, distractions, belief systems, and self-limitations. And the bubbles can be self-limitations from the self, or they can be self-limitations that are coming from other people that we have adopted or our own. I'm always about the questioning, right? I'm always about the reprogramming and defragmenting things that are no longer truth and finding our own selves, reclaiming our power, calling upon our magic, all those things. That's my thing. And to be able to think really, because you want to be true to yourself. If you see bubbles, just question your belief system. So if you see a lot of bubbles there, I'm like, hmm, what is my mind thinking? And what is my mind telling me that I got to really release? Because there's a lot of mental conflict happening in there. Okay, I did it, 30 minutes. So this is what we saw today. Um, this, this just shouldn't say what you will learn. This should say what you learn it, but it's okay. Uh, basic, super, super mega basics, Olympias, principles of transference, interpretation. Here's the QR code again. Uh, if you wanna learn more about this, go get that class for free, my gift to you. Um, Cause it's awesome that you're here hanging out with witches, healers, and shamans from all over the world. It's just amazing. Thank you, Llewellyn, for this. Uh, so just get the information here so that you can go deeper. There's a, the complete protocols. And again, this is an open practice. This is my opinion. I think everybody can use it. Of course, be respectful. Like, don't go and teach it because that's kind of like, well, that's not your roots. But unless you are Latin, and then please go ahead and do whatever you can. Help people. We want to be sure that we are spreading light and healing through the world otherwise what's our point to be here right why, why are we here if we're not doing good why are we here if we're not helping others why why okay uh if you have any questions comments if you want to keep in touch i probably should have added my social media here but i forgot i'm in tiktok and instagram and facebook look for bruja power botanica uh, that's the email support at bruja.us if you have any questions please send them um, I'm technically on a vacation, so I will probably not answer them until I'm back home, but I do want to answer them. I do want to connect with you, and I do want to do whatever it is that I can to help, because that's what I'm here for. I'm here for liberation. I'm here for inviting everybody to be true to, true to themselves and, and deprogram whatever crap they believe about themselves so that they can see their beauty and their magic and their power and their abundance. That's who I am. So I would love to hang out here or somewhere else. Um, I'm going to be in person in Atlanta. I have the mega honor to be one of the headliners at Mystic Sound. Um, so come and see me there. If you're going to be there, it will be nice. Just go and say, hey, Wendy, I saw you. Um, in the Llewellyn uh, presentation or whatever, say whatever. I would love to connect. Um, I did it. I did it in 23. If we have like, maybe we can do like one question. Um, if anybody has one question, drop it. No questions. Yay. Oh, maybe we do. I don't know. This chat is a little. Um, Katie saying, this was my favorite presentation. Ooh, thank you. <laughs> I feel special. <laughs> thank you. Uh, let's see. Hands down. Na -na -na, double joke. Ooh. So I am um, very skeptical. <laughs> Even that I'm teaching about magic here. So it's kind of funny. But double joke may just be, may just be genetics. Uh, may just be the fact that there was two little tiny chickens in that egg. Right? Or whatever the genetics of that could be. Uh, but if you are seeing a double joke and it feels weird to you, what I will recommend is that you do an additional divination method. Again, tarot or pendulum or whatever, like, you know, muscle testing, whatever it is that works for you to ask. 
um, or a different cleansing and say, okay, this is not very clear. One thing that I've learned in life, I've been doing this my entire life. I come from a family that does this, right? But one thing that I've learned that maybe my family didn't pass to me, but that I learned through life is that we have the right, this is right, I don't know, but probably right, to ask spirit to be very clear with communication. I'm a very practical person. So if I see something and I don't understand, I right away tell spirit, can you please be more clear? I need to be sure that I understand the message. I need to be sure that I understand what you're trying to tell me. There is no time, space, continuum for biases and fears. So just be clear. So when you're going to start your egg, have this very nice conversation with your own power, whatever you believe on, and say, I really want to know what you have to tell me, but please be clear. Please be sure that you're sending me messages that I understand. Please be sure that you send me messages that I'm not going to have a double meaning to them. Um, they say, um, I hope that helps. Does that help? Uh, Penny, I am a mother of twins. And when I crack eggs with my boys present, we always get multiple jokes. That's amazing. <laughs> Let's talk magic, right? That's amazing. A sign of how divinely guided we are. Um, Will feeding someone an egg used for Olympia be a way to curse them? You! Well, I... Yeah. Yeah, you will be giving them the funk, but... Okay, so let's be clear here. If I had to feed my family and the only thing I had an egg, right? And that egg, I had to use it for Olympia for whatever reason, and we have nothing else on the table. I will just like really, really pray who the divine, whatever that is for you, to cleanse the energy of it, uh, to eat it. Although if I didn't have anything to feed my family, I will not use the egg for Olympia. I will use probably like a branch from a tree from outside. Um, I definitely don't recommend to do that because there is a consequence. I don't believe in the law of three and all that stuff, but I do believe in consequences. Like if we do something with the intention, it's going to come back to us. And it's going to come back to us one way or another. So we want to be very mindful of it. Uh, what we do to others, we do to ourselves because we're creating an energetic link. If I decide that I want to go fuck someone's life, I'm creating an energetic link there. And I'm not saying that you're doing this. I'm just answering the question. Um, you're creating an energetic connection, right? And in the same way that you're connecting to them, they're connecting to you. And if this person is a practitioner, they will use that link to get back at you. If they're smart and capable, there's many people that are smart and capable out there. They could do that. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Where in Mexico are you from? I'm from Tamaulipas, also called Tata -ta Tamaulipas, and that's because of the gunshots, because <laughs> it's a very dangerous place. Uh, I'm from a small town called Reynosa, right on the border. My family's from Coahuila, and right now I'm in Yucatan visiting. Uh, my sister has a house over there, over here. Uh, but I actually live in Virginia. That's where I am from. Uh, let's see. Any more questions? Eggshells in water, meaning? That's a great question. So it could be two things. If we talk about mundane, it could be that we just didn't know how to open the egg, right? Um, and we could also, if we wanted to give a spiritual meaning, we can give a spiritual meaning to everything. Uh, if we wanted to give it a spiritual meaning, I will interpret that as contamination, as a kind of like little particles of contamination that perhaps we have to continue. So I will go deeper in distractions. I will actually go perhaps layer by layer of the chakras. The chakras have four quadrants. I will go to each of the quadrants to see if there's any extractions. I will go into the main meridian and see if there's any deeper parasites or energies that are stuck in there to release. But again, it could be that we don't know how to open an egg, or it could be that it's actually tell us, telling us, alert, 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 there is something really big here that we gotta get out. Um, um, anything else? Uh, Llewellyn. Maybe one last question. Any other questions? I wanna be super respectful of everybody's time. And thank you for having me, it's just a pleasure. I'm in, a, um, in the bathroom. <laughs> well, this is the bathroom. This is the sink. This is the only place where there was enough light for this call. Um, so, oh, I love this question. What is your favorite part of your practice? <sighs> Ancestral work. The fact that I know that I'm never alone. Never. 
my ancestors are always talking. I always say, I used to be in the corporate world. I worked in the corporate world for 20 years. I was a senior director of operations in cybersecurity, very different than full-time witch. Until one day my grandmother came in a dream and she told me that it was time to leave what I was doing to change my life and serve. Kind of like right now, I'm gonna cry. Um, and I say, yes. Well, I negotiated a lot <laughs> first because he meant a very drastic change, right? Corporate world, senior director, blah, 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 bruja. But the moment that I finally say yes, my life started to unfold so beautifully, so magically. So the best part of our practices, I believe, is the connection that we have with our ancestors. The support system that exists out there for us that always reminds us that we are never alone that always reminds us that we have that they have our back that there are hundreds or thousands behind us that came to carve the path for growth for our success for our love for our joy that we're never alone um, that's actually a wonderful question thank you for asking it my my favorite part is our ancestral work um, I have a lot of ancestor work uh, classes. Uh, check my website or send me an email or whatever if you want to learn about ancestors. That's actually one of my favorite topics uh, because we are always supported. We have to know which ancestors to talk to, but we are always supported. We're always guided. We're always told. And when we listen, the path opens for us. There's one thing I can promise you, that when you listen to spirit, to your ancestors, life becomes beautiful it's supposed to be your life is not supposed to be a life of struggle your life is supposed to be a life of beauty of joy of abundance of love and that happens when we listen that happens when we listen to spirit and when we have when we listen to our ancestors um yeah thank you that was an awesome question thank you for being here enjoy your beautiful day um reach out if i can help you in any way and i'll talk to you soon